So there is a very particular type of problem that we love having to solve at FutureDoc. And that is this time of year when people come and they have three or four offers from medical or dental schools. And now they're in the position of trying to choose which one they actually want to go to. So here we're going to talk about the steps that you need to think about, the actions that you need to take. And at the very end, I'll probably tell you the most important thing that is going to determine whether you should choose a medical or dental school to go to to study at. Now, the first thing is an action to take. So when you get an offer from a medical or dental school, one of the things they will offer is a offer holders event. So people who have been made an offer, they have special events to come and try and convince you basically that you should choose them as your firm choice for uh, when you're going to go to university. I think this is probably one of the best determinants of whether you actually vibe with the place. You can go and check out the atmosphere, see if it's the kind of environment that you want to go to. You can go and ask students questions. They don't even have to be studying the degree that you like to tell you what it's like there. It's really important to go and understand what your life is going to be like living there. They'll also usually give you specific talks about your course and what that's going to look like, what the type of study is like, what the day-to-day -day is like, what the schedule is like, and give you a kind of an understanding of whether it's something you resonate with as a way of working. The second thing you can do, and I would take with a massive pinch of salt, is to check the university rankings. Now, there are many different rankings, so which one to trust I've discussed in this video here where you can understand the different ways that they're rated. But honestly, I wouldn't focus too much on rankings. For example, when I went to King's College London for dentistry, it was the best in the world and it has since fallen off. Hopefully nothing to do with me being there, but it's the same when I went to Cardiff University for medicine as well. It was, I think, in the top five back then. and you know, events transpired that meant that it fell off that as well. So these can change massively. So I wouldn't pay too much attention to them because as long as they are decent universities, your enjoyment and how you perform while you're there will be way more important than the name on the CV after. So really think about how that university can support you as an individual to grow and nurture you and become the kind of practitioner, whether it's medicine or dentistry, that you really want to go on and thrive in. One thing that's worth considering is the teaching style because that will really dictate your lifestyle. If it's problem-based learning, which is at the start of the week, you get together in your group and you get presented a case or a problem, and then it's up to you to go away and learn all the elements of that. So it might be understanding the sociology of the problem, like the epidemiology maybe as well. Maybe it's understanding the basic anatomy. Maybe then you go on to learn pathophysiology and the treatments and all that sort of stuff. So it's really important to understand whether you're comfortable going away and being self-directed in your learning. For some people, they don't do enough and then they kind of don't realize that they're underprepared. Some people don't know when to stop and they find it really difficult to know where the line is and they've done enough preparation. And some people are just right and they work really well in that circumstance kind of by having that, managing their own time, having a lot of free time, but managing to get the work done within their own schedule. So that works quite well for some people. The other end is the traditional course where it's very lecture-based and where we have systems-based learning. So you'll learn about the cardiovascular system, you'll learn about neurological system. They'll do them all separately and then piece them together. And it's usually in modules and in lectures that it's delivered to you. I wouldn't say spoon fed, but you kind of know, are told exactly what it is you need to learn. You need to spend a lot of time in lectures, usually nine to five. And you also have to then go away and learn it on top of that to make sure that you remember all of it. And then you have an integrated course, which is something between the two that combines the best of both. One thing that you might consider, but is probably very minor, is understanding whether that particular medical or dental school has a specialty for any particular area. It's very early in your career to be thinking about special areas of interest, but if you do have one, if you are really interested in, for example, oncology and development in cancer treatments, and that university is well known for research in that area, then maybe it's something that you want to consider. Usually when you're going to medical or dental school at this stage, you just kind of want to focus on getting through, doing well, becoming a good doctor or dentist, and then you worry about your specialization later on. However, if it is something that you're really passionate about and you want to go to a university to 
go to a world leading center in that subject, then by all means, that is a good area to guide you for whether you should choose that university. Another minor thing that you might want to consider is the size of the cohort. For example, my medical school was 350 students. It's a very big, kind of anonymous in some ways if you want it to be, and you can kind of drown out in the number of students. Whereas if you go to a university, some have as few as 20, usually kind of somewhere in the 70s for the newer universities. These are things where you can get more attention. Class sizes are smaller, lectures are smaller, and that way you can ask questions and kind of feel more involved and have more interaction with all of the lecturers and professors and all of the people who are teaching you. But on the flip side, you might enjoy having a larger group. You know, the more the merrier. It's a big group, lots of fun, lots of people that you could get on with and lots of potential friends to make. And finally, as promised, probably the most important thing is the location, because people underestimate just how much time you're going to spend at university. You have to live in the area as well. You know, you have weekends, you only spend eight hours a day maximum in university, and realistically, it probably won't even be that much. And the rest of the time, you have to live in that place. So are you in a, gonna go to a big city? Do you like big cities? Or do you want somewhere a bit sleepier and a smaller town? Do you wanna be in a campus where you're kind of in your own little university bubble or do you want to be more metropolitan and integrated into the city these are all really important things and of course with the city and the location comes the cost if you're in london it's going to be the most expensive but then there are other expensive cities cambridge isn't cheap uh, places like manchester and Birmingham are becoming more expensive so it's depending where you want to live can you afford it can you afford the lifestyle that you want and really think about the interests that you have is somewhere known for having a really great, whether it is an arena for something that you like, or do they have a great team there for a sport that you're interested in? Do they have great facilities for a hobby that you like? Think about all of these things because again, your enjoyment of the place will contribute to your mental health and that will mean that you will essentially perform better. If you're happier at university, you'll just naturally perform better. And that will all in all lead to just better, greater outcome really. So this is a really exciting time and you're going to be getting ready to prepare for university. So if you want to find out about how to sort out your student finances, I recommend that you check out this video here because it's going to be a massive help. But also if you have anyone who's applying to medicine and you want to give them a free resource that's going to help them with their application, I recommend you check out this video here, which is basically a directory of all the amazing resources we have on the YouTube channel. But otherwise, enjoy university. It's going to be an absolute blast and I really look forward to seeing how you get on.